Welcome to Whiteboard Friday. This week we're looking at predator-free Rakiura. Well, this week we've seen the release of some options papers which are talking about ways that we might move towards a predator-free Rakiura. It's, it's, this is a, an issue we've talked about before, Morgan Foundation has been involved with. Uh, it's a massive project, uh, hugely complex, and has been described as New Zealand's man on the moon moment. If we can, if we can pull this off, it'll make something truly world class. We don't know if it's going to go ahead yet, that's of course up to a lot of people, the, the communities of interest that are involved with the project on the island. This is my bad picture of Rakiura. Uh, but what we're going to do is really just, in this uh, Whiteboard Friday, just look really quickly at some of the, the, the costs of the overall project so you get an idea for the issues that are still in front of us. Yes. This is my really bad picture of Rakiura, uh, but what we're looking at at this point, instead of the 175,000 hectares across the whole island, we're just looking at this 5,000 hectares where the town of Oban is, where, where all of the people that live on Rakiura live. So that's, this is my, uh, my uh, more detailed map, very, again, very poorly drawn, but it gives us an idea of what, what drives the costs behind this project? The first choice that we've got to uh, make is where do we put the fence? So at the moment, what we're trying to do is break Rakiura into two parts. We're trying to break it into a, the populated section so that we can eradicate the predators on there you know, in, in a very manual way, that's very low risk, and then we can worry about the rest of the island later. <clears throat> so this 5,000 hectares where the, where the population is, we're going to put in, the proposal is to put in a fence between this and the rest of the island. Okay, So that fence could go in a number of places, somewhere in between these areas. One area, one fence line would give about 5,000 hectares that need to be eradicated. This other one would give around about a half of that or you know you could put the fence somewhere in the middle. This just gives an idea of the options that are in front of us. But regardless that fence is roughly the same length no matter where we put it and we know that that's going to cost roughly three million dollars to put that fence up as a barrier to the rest of the island so that predators can't get back in. Then once we've set up that fence we have to eradicate the predators inside that zone. <clears throat> And that, the cost of that depends on a number of areas. First, how big is the area that we want to eradicate? We're using quite expensive uh, techniques to get rid of the, the predators in this area because we have to do it all uh, by hand. You know, we, we don't want to use any aerial baiting. Uh, and so of course, 5,000 hectares is a lot more expensive to eradicate than 2,500 hectares. So where we put the fence impacts on the cost. Another issue that impacts on the cost is the gap between the predator lines, so that the, the size of this grid that we set up. Because within the area that we want to eradicate, we have to create lots of little predator lines. So lines that we go along and we put along uh, either traps or uh, bait stations. Every few meters to make sure that all of the possums, rats and feral cats in that area ultimately either get trapped or, or get poisoned. So the, the real question here is what are the gap, what's the gap between these lines? Because we have a little critter on Rakiura called the Kiore, which is a Pacific Island rat. Uh, it's not as, not as uh, populous as the, the more well-known ship and Norway rats. And we actually don't know how far apart these grid lines have to be to make sure that all the kiore get trapped. Could be somewhere between 25 and 100 metres. So that makes a big difference to the cost again for that grid area. And lastly, what method are we going to use? Uh, we're going to use bait stations or traps. Uh, that has an impact on the cost as well. All in all, the cost could be somewhere between 6 and 25 million dollars to go through this whole area and set up a grid for all of those rats, possums uh, and cats to get, to get caught. So quite a big unknown there 
particularly because of the kiore and because we don't know exactly how big an area we're going to be uh, trapping within. The last uh, element of the program is really making sure that no you know, nasty pests can reinvade the island after we've got rid of them all. So we have to have a system of biosecurity in place to make sure that you know, rats, possums and cats can't get back out into the uh, environment. And that would cost probably between one and two million dollars. Again, depending on the size of the area that we're trying to eradicate. So at the moment, we've got some options on the table for how to get to a predator-free rakiura, but depending on how we want to do it, there's still a huge, you know, huge range in the costs involved. Of course, it's gonna be a hell of a lot harder to fund something at a much higher cost than at the lower end of the spectrum. But it's really exciting. This, this, this uh, project is still moving forward. Could be a really big deal for New Zealand if it actually happens. And if it doesn't happen this time around, believe me, there's a lot of passionate people who want to see it happen. And as technology develops, I'm sure that this will still move forward towards the ultimate reality of having a predator-free rakiura.